A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. I like this sweeping little path here. That's, that's pretty nice. Further forward. Right, where's this path gone? It's safe to say I am off it. Sheeps! Hello! Ah, uh, well that looks horrible. What about this way? Something like... Yeah. Uh, I think that's even worse. It was supposed to be raining today until about midday. It's 10am uh, and it's sunny. So, typically accurate weather forecast. Uh, basically this video is a rant, but uh, because I'm going to talk for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, be better if the lighting wasn't quite as harsh. Maybe I'll just film this bit at home. Right, before I get started, uh, a couple of caveats to this rant. Number one, this is a rant from the perspective of me, somebody who is no longer a working photographer. Uh, what I mean by that is I no longer accept commercial jobs. I don't shoot events or sports or weddings or anything like that. If I did, I think I'd have a slightly different perspective on, on the stuff that I'm gonna talk about. Uh, number two, There'll be lots of you watching this video who at various points will probably shout at your screens, I've been thinking this for years. Um, yeah, I think there'll be lots of you that, that think this through the course of the video. So um, just put that out there. Right, I shall start by talking about golf, um, a bit randomly. Bear with me, hopefully towards the end, it'll all make sense. When I was 13 or 14, something like that, uh, I was obsessed with golf. Um, I used to play multiple times a week, sort of around school, not around the school buildings, uh, around my school work. I wouldn't have been allowed to play around the buildings, not, not considering how bad I was. Uh, but yeah, obsessed with golf. And I used to buy all the magazines whenever I could, all the golf magazines. And I'm still interested in golf. I never have a chance to play anymore. But whenever I'm in an airport, particularly, I'll go to the magazines and I'll flick through all the golf magazines. And they haven't changed. All the adverts in golf magazines used to be and still are from manufacturers of golfing equipment who talk about their latest and greatest stuff and how it'll help you hit the ball straighter and hit it further. That's the premise of pretty much all advertisements in golf. And whether it's true or not, I don't know. I mean, I think there are still plenty of really bad golfers in the world. I count myself as one of them. But I think there are lots of pastimes, interests, hobbies that people have that are like that, that are full of equipment that promises to help you in some way. And I remember when I was 13, and looking back, this is quite a profound thought for a 13 year old. I remember thinking that these manufacturers need to be careful because if they create something that's too good, people will stop playing golf. And what I think I meant by that was that if you had perfect golf equipment, if you had the perfect clubs and the perfect ball, that basically meant that every single time you swung a club, you hit a perfect shot then very quickly, I think you'd get bored of playing golf. I mean, it'd be fun for a round or two after years of hacking around and crying, but I think after you'd done it a second time and a third time, your level of interest in golf would diminish at the same rate that the challenge diminished. Which is to say that the only reason people do things like play golf is because it's heartbreakingly difficult. And the moment it's easy, it wouldn't be interesting anymore. Now, park that for a minute um, and we will come back to it. Bye. I'll stop at nothing to get a sheep to look at me. So last week, Leica uh, announced a new camera called the M6. I say new camera, it's a re-release of an old camera. Uh, now, I am the furthest thing from a camera historian. I have absolutely no idea when it comes to the history of cameras, really. I don't know anything about them, much less film cameras in particular. But what I do know is that the M6 was like an icon, basically. Lots of people loved it, lots of people still use it, and as a result, Leica have decided to bring it back because I think, first and foremost, 
they imagine they can make a profit from doing so. And I don't blame them. If I worked for Leica, I'd have done exactly the same thing. But last week I was watching some videos about the release or re-release of this camera, thinking who is gonna pay five grand for a camera that as far as I can tell, is 95% made up of technology, which is decades old. And I couldn't work it out. I couldn't really get my head around it. Park that and fast forward to yesterday. Yesterday for me, not yesterday for you, which was the release of the Sony A7R Mark V, which I took particular interest in because the last 18 months I've been using the Mark IV. And so I was very interested to hear what, uh, what the Mark V could do. And in short, it's a list of upgrades that you'd expect in 2022. Uh, better video, a better screen, a better EVF, a better processor, the standard kind of stuff that you'd expect from an upgrade of a camera. Uh, now, because I didn't want to do any work and I was happy to procrastinate, I watched some videos as well as reading the specs about the, uh, the Mark V. And one of them, I think it was Kai's video. If it was, I'll link it below. But Kai showed a shot where he was basically pointing his camera at the Mark V and that was shooting uh, a breakdancer. And there was a particular moment where the breakdancer was like on his back and his feet were in the air and all he could see were his feet flying around and the camera was auto focusing perfectly on his feet. And then immediately, as soon as his face came into shot and as soon as doesn't do it justice, it was immediate. As soon as his face came into shot, the camera locked focus on his eye. And at that moment, I had exactly the opposite reaction that I thought I would have. Now, basically, if you'd asked me beforehand what I'd have thought of that, I'd have probably thought in light of the Leica release or re-release, what incredible value from a Sony camera to have that kind of technology for much less than a 30-year-old camera. But what I actually thought was, this is too much, and all of a sudden, I can understand why people will buy the Leica. Now, admittedly, I think this is an odd realization to have for somebody who has had a phone, wherever my phone is, uh, which relies on computational photography in its cameras for years. Uh, equally, I have had sponsors of videos on this channel uh, who make software which, with one click of a button, can replace the sky in a photo. So technology has been encroaching on certainly my photography for a long, long time now. And to me at least, it certainly seems a bit strange that my brain has chosen this moment, basically a minor upgrade of a camera with some slight kind of AI autofocus stuff to say, right, no, this, this is the edge. This is the point where I'm unwilling to accept technology encroaching onto my process. Now, much like golf, Photography, for a lot of us, is a process where we rely on the equipment to help us out. The question will always be, how much help are we willing to accept so that we still enjoy the process and feel part of the process and also end up with a result that we're happy with? Naturally, the better the technology, the more likely we end up with a result that we're happy with. But at what cost? How much do we feel part of that result? And in this example, how much credit can we take for a shot being in focus when the camera has literally done everything? Now, as I said at the start of this video, there will be many of you screaming that you've been saying this for years, that maybe, I don't know, autofocus full stop was your point where you were like, there's too much technology in photography now. Uh, there will be others of you who won't have really felt this yet, and you might not get to this moment until, I don't know, 15 years time when cameras are flying around choosing your compositions for you. Regardless, I think for all of us, there is a point when we think to ourselves, right, there's, there's too much technology here now. I don't feel like I'm involved. And like I said, somewhat weirdly, it was yesterday, looking at the autofocus performance of this new Sony camera, that I thought, no, no, too much. Now, I am certainly not gonna go out and buy a 5,000 pound dollar euro film camera. Film photography for me, I don't think I've got the patience for the developing, the scanning, everything that's involved with that. But as of yesterday, I have an appreciation for why people value cameras and systems, which don't just exclude the cutting edge technology, but embrace the fact that they don't use the cutting edge technology. And moreover, when I've seen in the past people describe themselves on Instagram or on their websites or in person as film photographers, I've never known why they do that. Because for me, if someone describes themselves as a photographer, then I want to see their photos. If someone describes themselves as a film photographer, 
I want to see their photos. There's no, there's no difference there. I just want to see their photos. And the medium, I didn't really understand why that was relevant. However, I sort of feel like now I do. I get it. And it makes sense to me that somebody would want to tell the world that they've detached themselves from the crutch that is technology. Because I do think it changes how you see their work and certainly how much credit you give them for that work. Now I should also say that I don't blame Sony for trying to improve their autofocus systems. Like I said, if I was a, a wedding photographer, I think this camera would look like the absolute bee's knees. I'd be very excited about it because I'd be a person who is paid for my results. But uh, I am a photographer who's paid in a weird sort of way for the process of photography as well as the result. Now most people are not paid for photography in any way. They just do photography both for the result and the process. And I wonder as technology improves, how much the enjoyment of the process will be encroached upon. Um, yeah, so that's that's my thoughts on the uh, the Lycra M6 and the uh, the A7R Mark V, but more broadly, the, the camera industry. Mm. I mean, as you know, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, um, I started with, with Micro Four Thirds stuff, and then I moved to full frame, and then I went back to Micro Four Thirds and back to full frame. I'm liable to change my mind on all these things, and, and maybe I will. But yeah, these are these are some thoughts I, I've been having, and I, since I have a photography channel, I thought I'd share them. Anyway, I don't know if that's interesting or not, but uh, thank you for watching. And also, thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Now, if you shoot on a camera from 1910, or maybe you shoot on a camera that's been designed by NASA and runs on the tears of Elon Musk, I don't know. If you want to show your photos to the world, I can't think of a better way to do it than with a Squarespace website. Now, Squarespace has loads of templates to choose from. I use one called Wells, have done for the last five or six years. And it's a super simple way to give you complete control of how your work appears to others. And no doubt soon I shall be uploading my first photos from my £5,000 Leica. No, I, I won't be doing that. But I will be uploading more photos from my Sony A7R Mark IV. Uh, anyway, if you'd like to give Squarespace a try, you can do so for free by going to squarespace.com to start a free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10 percent off of that first purchase and a uh, big thank you to them for their continued support uh, next week i'm hoping that i won't be ranting and that i'll be out taking photos again I, in fact i'm sure i will be so yes i'll uh, i'll see you then cheers <laughs> <laughs>